Okay guys, I'm gonna try to do a garden update. I hope you can hear me. Brian's cleaning out the barn. So there's some noise from that, but I figured this would be better than any other time. The kids are sleeping, except for two. Anyway, um, so this is the garden update. So I'll show you everything. I put up these trellises, finally. Um, these are from the Square Foot Gardening group or the Square Foot Gardening book um, by Mel Bartholomew. Um, it uses electrical conduit and these joints and then you buy the trellis net it's called. Um, they have it on Amazon but I actually got as much as I needed a lot. Um, it was the same price per like foot but it was a smaller quantity that was all I needed. So I got that at Menards. I got the conduit at Menards. And then down here you put um, you put rebar in the ground and then you put your pipe right over the rebar. So I got half inch conduit and half inch rebar actually fit inside of it. So that's what I got. The two foot pieces of rebar were already cut. Um, Brian cut the top piece of the conduit for me and then the sides, I just used them as tall as they came. I think it was five foot maybe. So, um, I have peas, peas. Uh, I think I have cucumber. And then there was peas in these three um, square feet also. And they, the, there was another like row of peas. You can see this little pea coming up, but it got kind of shaded out by the broccoli. Um, I thought about staking back the broccoli a little bit, but I have six broccoli plants. Um, so you can kind of see six square feet. Each has one broccoli plant. They're not putting on heads yet. Well, they're just, just starting, but they sure are tall and they're doing great. And then I also have six square feet of kale one plant per square foot. So you can see the um, you can see the string still marking out the square foot. There's this string. So there's one plant in the middle of that square foot. So I have six of those. So I need to start cutting that and eating it. We usually eat kale chips like roasted in the oven. So I'm not sure how that's gonna go. I don't think that we'll be able to freeze the kale because I don't know that it would ever crisp up again. So if you've ever frozen kale and then used it to make kale chips, I would love to hear that, but I'm thinking I'll just have to start cutting it and making a point to eat it up while it's in season now. Strawberry bed has grown tremendously. They're putting out so many runners. Um, I've been kind of moving the runners around. I started with two plants per square foot with the intention of moving the runners so that I would get at least four plants per square foot and it's definitely filling in to that level for sure. And I have another empty bed that I, um, I had thought this year I would let this bed fill in and then next year I would watch for the runners and start moving them to a second bed, but there's so many runners, I might have to move some to the second bed this year. So we'll see. Um, I haven't got any of a harvest off of these berries. I think they're mostly June bearing, and I didn't expect them to harvest when I moved them because, um, or to produce, because I had just moved them this spring when they were already starting to grow. So they did get some blossoms, some plants did, and they did get some berries. Um, there's a couple here hanging out, but um, I would say if I had picked every berry that grew, I might have got maybe a pound or two this year. And as it was, I just didn't bother because I've had trouble with the chickens getting in my garden. And I think the dog is eating the berries. And so I have to get the cover with the net put up for next year for sure. So this year I'm just letting them grow. Um, okay, my greens are definitely needing to be picked. We just cut off our first head of lettuce right here today. So there's four heads per square foot and we have six square feet of that. That's um, that Paris, I don't know how to pronounce it, Paris something. It's kind of like a romaine lettuce. So we're starting to eat those and we'll go through those pretty quickly. So I'm not worried about them going to waste. 
um, the spinach. Right here I have one, two, three square foot of spinach. Um, I've been pinching off the heads so that they will keep producing leaves. And we have not um, started picking this, so I need to come out here with a bag and fill it and start picking that. But that we can freeze, so I'm not worried about that either because um, we can freeze as much as we can produce and we use it in our smoothies. So that will be picked. I just wanted to get this garden update done before we started harvesting. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six um, more kale plants. So those will be good for kale chips later on. Another four heads, maybe five it looks like, um, of lettuce. I just kind of stuck in what I had left in that square. And this is spinach, and this is spinach. Someone just threw a ball at me. They got their trampoline fixed. So they're really excited. Um, our trampoline got caught in the windstorm and ripped. So we took it to an Amish guy and he sewed it up and now there's not a hole they can fall in. So they're pretty excited to have the thing back on to jump on. Um, I still have these flowers I started hanging around. Delphinium and Columbine flowers. I'm feeling like they must be like, they must have maxed out their containers with roots even though it looks like they could have grown more. Um, they're not growing, they're just kind of sitting. So I need to put those in something bigger, I guess. I don't know. I've, I've read on the Facebook groups that um, other people who started their flowers like that, they just kind of stopped growing too with these, this weird weather. So anyway, I finally filled in this bed. It could use a little more fill, but the like compost I was using was not really compost. It was like a pile of it was like a pile of dirt from the cow pen that had had manure in it and I thought it would be good enough but anyway it was kind of rocky and weedy so rather than introduce weeds I just did the peat moss and the vermiculite in this bed so far um, that's probably where I'll put the strawberries if I have to do it this year or if I can do it next year I was gonna put them in here this is the tomato bed this year so I had originally put only six tomato plants in this um, which is what, three by six, so 18 square feet. Um, I was trying to give them like two foot of space, but I had decided on that in the square foot gardening group. I had searched for tomatoes and Roma tomatoes and all kinds of things, and that's what I had come up with, people were doing. And then when people started planting tomatoes and posting all these pictures, they were doing one per square foot. And I said, have you guys done that before? Is that really gonna work? And they said oh yeah they've done one per square foot for years so I went back and added a lot of tomatoes so I have one per square foot um, and when I was gonna do six I was going to use regular uh, tomato cages but now that I'm gonna do this I think I'm gonna go back to um, I can't remember what they call it but I've done it before where I'll put like a T post three T posts at each end and then you put the string you know you weave it between the plants and then as they get taller, you weave it between them again. Um, I wasn't going to do that because then you have to keep up with the tying. But if it's just one bed, I think that'll be manageable. So you can tell, like, this is a plant that I planted originally. And this is a plant that I added when I found out I could add more. Um, this one got broken off in the hailstorm. But I just let it go and the dead part fell off. And I'm going to see. Maybe it'll still get big enough to produce. And then potatoes. I have my potato pots filled all the way to the top. I finally did that. So you just keep adding dirt. You can see it's right to the top now. Um, you just keep adding dirt as they grow. And I let mine grow more than I probably should have before I added it because some of my seed potatoes didn't grow. So then I had like a tall plant and then a little tiny plant next to it. And I wanted to let the little tiny ones grow before I covered them. So. I filled those in. This one's blossoming. Um, I think that might be all it's blossoming so far, which is fine. I was watering them every day, but then we've got so much rain, I quit doing that. So they're doing good. I have pumpkins. I bought these pumpkin plants at Walmart because I didn't get mine in when I wanted to, and I wanted them to 
produce. So, um, I've got, so I've got the pumpkin plants growing. I have it all written down what kinds they are. So we've got, what, seven of those. And then this green patch is my sweet corn. Um, I've been just hoeing a couple rows a day as they got tall enough that I could tell for sure what was corn. So these rows I planted first and then I was planting like three or four rows every day. So they get smaller as you go, but you can see them all now, the rows. So I need to get to work on the hoeing. I haven't decided if I'm going to mulch the corn. Um, usually I do mulch with straw and I asked, there's a couple of gardening groups. I should link to them on Facebook, um, but they're very helpful. I'm gonna sit for a minute, I'm out of breath. Um, so there's a couple of gardening groups anyway, and I had asked on there if um, other people mulch with straw and if that's okay, or if that's making them more prone to problems. And um, someone did say that because straw is, you know, wheat and it's related to corn, it's in the grass family, that it can spread disease and I have had in other years quite often where my corn gets, you know, fungal growth and stuff like that. So kind of wondering about that. Um, I want to use straw because we have our own straw and so it's free and it's easy to rake up when we're done. Um, and the people online were saying leaf litter or mulch would be way better. I just don't have any, well I have a lot of mulch, but I think I need it for other places. So anyway, I'm kind of torn. I think what I might do is just look through the straw and try to pick out some that looks especially bright and fresh and clean and not like dingy old straw and see if that makes a difference. We'll see. I'm, I don't know. Maybe I'll just hoe it and see if the weeds come back too much or if the corn grows enough to shade the weeds. I only put my rows one, um, one foot apart this year. Usually I do them far enough apart to rototill between them, but um, I was kind of experimenting because if I move into having more of the raised beds, then eventually I could do like a 10 by 10 bed or something with corn. So I had read that the um, little bit of crowding, it's more than made up for in the amount you produce per square foot that way. So anyway, I'm trying it. Okay, um, blueberry plants. I dug up some, I don't know if those were here in the last update. I had dug up some that died and returned them to Walmart because um, they had a one year guarantee. So this one is going good. This one is going really good. Has some berries. This one is going really good and it did have some berries until the chickens escaped again and ate them. Chickens are really on my bad list. Uh, the rhubarb is more than grown. I need to pick that and get it canned. So I was waiting for cooler weather, which it is a little cooler. I should be doing that. Um, the asparagus has done awesome. This year just kind of proves that if you actually pick the asparagus, it will produce so much more. I have been picking every day, sometimes twice a day, and getting usually like a pound a day. And I just picked another pound this morning. It's still growing. And I'm trying to keep all these parts off, but like I snap the top off and then they put out all these shoots. So I'm trying to keep them from going to seed because they just seem to keep producing if I do that. Um, I have three raspberry bushes here. I don't know, again, if these were here last time, but um, my neighbors were so kind to give us some of their raspberry shoots and it was just such a blessing because they were like five dollars a plant at um, Walmart or wherever and then they were dying and so this was free and they said they have hundreds more if I need them. Um, I had some that looked like they were dying so I pruned them off and now I think I'm still not sure I have one, two, three that might be kind of heading for death. So if that happens, I'll just replace them. But um, the rest came back. Like this one was one I thought was dying. And then it started, I pruned it and it started putting out new shoots. So like same with this, um, the leaves were all kind of dying and then 
started putting on all new ones. So they are coming. So I'm very excited about that. Brian loves raspberries. Uh, this is where I'm at with the mulch. I was putting the mulch in around here. Um, I almost have this part filled in. And then I probably will put more over here in this walkway. And then I need to put some along the edge of the fence right there in that stretch. So this mulch pile is finally dwindling. Um, it was so much work and I would do like one load of mulch and then I would get so out of breath and I'd have to sit down and I'd be done. So what I started doing is um, parking the wheelbarrow there and then when Brian walks by, he will fill it or Ken actually fills it a lot of the time. So we set a goal of like two loads a day. And so they try really hard to fill it for me. And as soon as I see that it's filled, I like run out and go dump it where I want it. And the dumping it isn't hard. It's just a filling it. So that's been working out really good um, to finally to stay on it. Cause I don't want a mulch pile here all the time. My grapes are doing awesome. They're looking good. Showing you the wrong thing. There we go. Yeah, they're doing really good. Um, so I'm excited about that and I'm thinking I had to like, when should I cover them with a net? Because I don't want the birds to take too many of them. But there are a lot of grapes on there. I'm really happy with how they're going. I've never pruned the grapes before or taken care of them at all. So this year I, I did prune them and I tied them up um, to the wire and spread them out and it's really paid off. So I'm excited to have grapes. I will do um, grape jelly is probably what we'll do. We did, used to do grape juice. And then um, for those of you that might know, like oh, one of my kids is on this special diet and oddly enough, grapes are one thing that cause him some problems. And so I don't like to do the grape juice because they just drink so much all at once. Um, the grape jelly, he can handle better like a little bit at a time. All this mulch is new. We've done all that around the rocks because it was always having to be weed whacked. And these are my cherry plants. I think in the last update, I was just planting those and they were like brown dead looking sticks. But I knew they were looking like that because they were dormant and they did come back. So they look beautiful. I'm so excited to have cherries someday. Um, we put like feed bags under those. I think I showed that in the video. And then I built these boxes. These are cedar. Um, there's two more over there. So those go around our fruit trees. I had them laid out around the trees, but I hadn't got them filled with mulch and then the weeds grew in them. So I just moved them and mowed and I'm gonna put them back and put the newspaper and the mulch down. So that's been really, really good to have that looking better over here. And then we did new mulch all along the front. And these are some kind of perennial, I forget what they're called, but they do flower. So I'm glad to see those coming back so good. This is my rose bush from a couple Mother's Days ago. And then my rose bush from this year from Mother's Day. These are, um, oh goodness, what do they call them? Uh, Black-eyed Susans maybe right here and right here these are weeds I had flower bulbs in there that didn't really come this spring and now they're weeds and then peach tree we lost a lot of peaches in one of the last hailstorms but there's still a fair amount hanging on so um, unless she eats them we'll have some peaches I really need to come up with some kind of a cage because the reason this tree looks like this is because a few years ago the dogs uh, tried to eat the whole thing pretty much so now I um, have to watch she's the only one we have left she's not still so bad but she still might be tempted by that so that's about it I had some hostas over here I have one there you can see and then I had another one over here and it died this year and then I had two other perennials like here and here in between them that were really pretty but 
they didn't make it through the winter so i guess i need to stick with hostas or something i don't know maybe something else if you have any ideas what would look nice here that's really low maintenance and cold hardy that would be great all right i think that's everything thanks guys